Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Lisa the Ukulele Fool. If, if this is your first time, well, hey, nice to meet you. And if this isn't your first time, I hope you're a good friend. My, my dog is horking on something down here and, you know, ignore her. Alright, I am a professional music educator. I started teaching in 1983 at Ielsen Air Force Base in Alaska. And I still teach to this day, except for my um, students are older. Here's what we're going to cover in this tutorial. There's lots of stuff in there. There's certainly easy things, but if you want an additional challenge, I've got those thrown in for you as well. And I'm doing the history nerd stuff. If you like that, please let me know in the comments below. A lot of the chords in this song are just stick to F and C, so some very beginning chords. But there is the B flat thrown in. So just a quick tip for B flat, roll your finger to the bony part as you're doing that bar up at the top. That will help you seat in and get more contact with those strings. Another tip is to use your arm and kind of lever your use of physics, basically. Use, put, put a little pressure there, pushing your neck into your fingers rather than just your fingers into the neck. The end of the chorus has some really rapid chord changes. You only get two beats on the B flat, the F, That's pretty quick chord changes. I recommend that you practice those in isolation, just working. you could put two silent beats in between. So, switch to an F, two, switch to an C, switch to an F, two. Give yourself the leisure of giving yourself some time. Be gentle with yourself. Be gradual with your practice. And just, you'll get it. You will. You will. If your chords, if you're already feeling really comfortable with F, C, G7, and B flat, well, why not throw in an F7? Yeah, so you take your F and you just throw in your middle finger on the C string on the third fret. And it gives a little bit more tension and interest to that chord. That's one way of doing the F7, but there's another way too you can throw in your pinky on the C string on the third fret and then that C note pops out at the top. So it makes it a different sound. One way is not more right than the other. It's just this sound or that sound. An A is in an F7 chord and so is a C. So the choice is totally up to you with me so far? I hope so. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to my channel or hit the like button, please do so. It helps other ukulele players find my tutorials. Just like my dog is scrounging around here hoping that I've left some food. Okay, dogs, say hi so people know that you're real and it's not my tummy rumbling. Oh no, now it's time for the, the play fight. I kept the strumming pattern for this really simple, just up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Keep it nice and simple so it's one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. However, I did 
write in some single strums just to break it up like this. It's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. And I've got those marked in the chord chart. If you'd like to become one of my patrons, the chord charts are absolutely free to every song that I've done. Plus, you're supporting my charity works. And I'll, I'll put a link down there to one if you'd like to get it for free or maybe throw me just a tip. Thanks. Let me just show you just something that you could also do besides those single strums to kind of spice it up on the um de la 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 um de la. <laughs> I, I like to pick that. Um, the picking pattern that I like to use is plucking the C and then all my other fingers pluck, pluck the other three. So when I tuck my index finger out of the way, I don't know if you can see that there. So I... Like that. But you don't have to do that. For You could just strum it through. Or you could pluck, you know, as long as you're fingering the chord, you could... Or you could just do the top and bottom. You could do the C string and the A string. Just a chance to break up the sound, make it something different and interesting, and maybe to challenge yourself as well. Docious Alley Explistic Fragicali Ruffus. I said it. So, how do you do it? Well, you just kind of put things, you take chunks of the word and put it in reverse order. You don't really say it backwards, so it's docious, alley, explistic, fragi, cali, repus. But sometimes when I perform this for, you know, for like at a senior center or at the hospital or something like that, I will just butcher it, and which makes it all the more fun because people then, you know, it shows a human side and they think it's kind of funny and yeah, so have fun with it. This song was written in 1964 by Robert and Richard Sherman Brothers, and the origins of the word are ingrained with psalms. And there are songs from, like, I think 1949, there was another one in 1950-something that used kind of variants on this word, and in fact, there was a legal battle over it because they said that, you know, basically the word had been lifted from a song, but uh, Disney was able to prevail on that and show that there was more than one song that had a word very similar to it, and so they prevailed in court. So, you've just been history nerded. Are you ready for the play along? I hope so. It's a little bit of a wild ride because this song has a little give and takes, but just, just follow along. I'll try to give you some body language. So, uh, one, two, and here we go. It's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. If you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious. Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Um, Say it backwards, which is docious alley expletition. 